I'm Dr. Hagmeyer, and in today's video, I'm going to talk about why your thyroid medication stops working. I also want to talk why women develop Hashimoto's at an alarming rate compared to men. I also want to talk about some of the thyroid markers that you want to get tested if you have a family history of thyroid disease. I want to talk about who's at risk for developing Hashimoto's and so much more. So stay tuned. So I'm glad you found my channel. I've been asked several times why women are more likely to develop Hashimoto's disease. Well, statistically speaking, Hashimoto's disease is four to 10 times more common in women than in men. And many times we find diagnosed women with Hashimoto's typically when there has been a shift in their hormones, right? So puberty, pregnancy, and especially during, menopause, well, during perimenopause, I call it the three Ps. There's several times in a woman's life where the immune system and the hormonal system are just being challenged to the greatest degree. And it's in this phase of a woman's life where your chances of getting diagnosed with Hashimoto's disease increases significantly, especially if there's other family members that also have this disease. Now, as with most autoimmune disorders, there are also a number of autoimmune triggers that are influenced by epigenetic and even our lifestyle choices. This means that there's so much that can be done from a natural standpoint. When it comes to genetics, what we see is if a mother has had thyroid disease or if a grandmother has had thyroid disease, chances are there's an autoimmune component to your thyroid disease that you're probably not even aware of, or maybe that they're not even aware of. One thing I highly suggest is that if you have multiple members of a family with thyroid disease, uh, that they get tested for Hashimoto's disease. And if not, tell them to watch this video and then get tested. Getting tested for Hashimoto's is super easy. It's a simple blood test. In the event your doctor is cooperative, all you have to do is ask him or her to simply run a blood test that looks at your thyroid antibodies. Now, when it comes to diagnosing the difference between Hashimoto's disease and uh, thyroid disease or hypothyroidism, this is where antibody tests are so important. Now, there's two specific antibodies that you'll want to get tested. And while your primary care doctor may not be interested in running these tests, I will tell you that a functional medicine doctor, functional medicine practitioner, will absolutely want to know if the cause of your hypothyroidism is caused by Hashimoto's or not. Now, the two tests you want to have are your TPO antibodies and your TGB antibodies. If you click on the description box of this video, I'll leave a link uh, for those tests as well as some additional information on, on those tests. And also, if you're having problems getting tested, I'll also leave some links on, on how you can do that. Now, if you stumbled upon this video thinking that you might have Hashimoto's disease or some other kind of thyroid problem, visit my website, take my thyroid quiz, and make sure you download my thyroid guide and my thyroid newsletter. There's a ton of great information in that guide that goes through some of the best thyroid markers, what they measure, the lab reference ranges that we like to see those numbers at, and of course, just a whole lot more. So make sure you get that free guide. Now, another common question that comes up uh, all too often is, has to do with the risk factors for Hashimoto. So here's a few things that I begin thinking about when someone tells me that they have thyroid disease, right? These are gonna be things that make me just super suspicious of Hashimoto's. So number one is if you've been previously diagnosed with another autoimmune disease, maybe you have celiac disease, maybe you have lupus, rheumatoid arthritis, maybe you have vitiligo or PCOS, maybe you have Sjogren's, type one diabetes, pernicious anemia. Again, these diseases put you at greater risk for Hashimoto's. Number two is if you're pregnant or you have perimenopause, uh, mentioned in the beginning of today's video, that puts you at an increased risk. Another risk factor that I think about for people with Hashimoto's is when a patient has both symptoms of both hypothyroidism and hyperthyroidism. And finally, I think about Hashimoto's in the patients that are thin, yet have symptoms like brain fog, depression, anxiety, fatigue, maybe they lose weight, gain weight, and maybe uh, even diagnosed with hypothyroidism. Keep in mind with Hashimoto's disease, studies show that when you've been diagnosed with one autoimmune disease, doesn't matter what the disease is, that within a 10 year period of time, the likelihood of developing another autoimmune disease substantially increases. This is why we call it, uh, this is why it's called polyautoimmunity. And I hate to say it over and over, but no amount of thyroid medication is going to stop this. With autoimmunity, your immune system has mistakenly started attacking and destroying some part of your body. And if you want to be proactive and start doing the things that can help slow this attack down, it's going to be incredibly important for you to focus and put your efforts on the individual autoimmune triggers, not just the organ being attacked. You see, replacing thyroid hormones, while it may make you feel better, doesn't stop the destructive nature of the immune system. 
And this is why you're going to want to work with a certified functional medicine practitioner. Your primary care doctor, your endocrinologist, they don't care about things like your diet. They don't care about things like your gut. They don't care about your nutrition. They don't care about your sex hormones and how your sex hormones contribute and, and connect to your thyroid. The only thing these doctors really care about is do you need thyroid medication or you, do you need a surgical consult to have your thyroid removed? That's it. And this is why if you want to address the root cause and try to prevent future thyroid problems and immune problems, you want to work with a functional medicine practitioner. Now, there's a few more things I want to share with you that I don't want to skim over because honestly, not a week goes by where a patient says to me, Dr. Hagmeyer, I was fine for five years just taking my Synthroid, my Levothyroxine, and now it stopped working. Well, so a few things with that. Number one, your medication didn't just stop working. What happened was your thyroid gland stopped working after years of ignoring the root cause and only treating your symptoms with thyroid replacement. Your immune system finally did what it was setting out to do. It saw your thyroid as an invader for years and it attacked it. In the aftermath of that attack, it caused tissue destruction and a loss of cellular thyroid function. And now the hormones that you've been replacing aren't enough to treat your symptoms. This is why I don't believe in treating symptoms. The second scenario is that there are other contributing factors now causing your low thyroid symptoms. And that even after replacing those hormones, it's not enough. The third scenario uh, why your medication so-called stopped working uh, is something called thyroid binding globulin. Now this is super important and I don't want, to, want you to miss this. This happened with a woman that I just uh, started working with. She'd been on estrogen replacement therapy for the last two or three years. You see, if you have too much estrogen, this can raise something called thyroid binding globulin. The problem with too much thyroid binding globulin is just what the name tells us. It's going to bind up your thyroid hormones. This is something to be on the lookout for you if you're a menopausal woman or if you're taking estrogen or you're on the pill. Remember, thyroid replacement like Synthroid or Levothyroxine or Tyrosint or any of these others, they do not address these other causes of poor thyroid function. They don't stop the immune system attack on the thyroid gland. It just provides you with the hormones that you're low in. Again, it's not going to address why the hormones are low in the first place. So if you want a chance at saving your thyroid from total destruction years down the road, you have to start focusing on these triggers, those things that have destabilized your immune system. Unfortunately, each of us will have a unique set of autoimmune triggers. Some people, it might be a high viral load. Uh, maybe they have a long history of battling with things like Epstein-Barr virus or cytomegalovirus or herpes. In other patients, it might be a high bacterial load or parasites. Uh, other people, it might be a mold exposure or mycotoxins or environmental work chemicals. In others, these autoimmune diseases like Hashimoto's is triggered by bouts of prolonged stress that have caused problems with the fight or flight system. I see this with many patients, uh, thyroid patients, who experience depression and anxiety. Some people's triggers are rooted in their gut microbiome or histamine intolerance. I mean, the list could go on and on, but the point here is that there are a number of triggers and part of what your functional medicine doctor will need to do is spend time combing through your health history looking for the subtle clues into why your immune system is challenged, why it's become overly aggressive, and then identify as many of the potential triggers uh, individually that are affecting you. I don't know what that looks like for you. I don't know your history. There's no cookie cutter testing that's right for everybody, and not every autoimmune disease is caused by a bad gut. Okay, so figuring that all out is gonna be the job of your functional medicine practitioner. Now, one piece of advice that I would tell you if you're watching this and feeling overwhelmed is that you should interview several doctors and make sure that number one, that they're certified in functional medicine. If they're not certified in, in functional medicine, then I would just move on, all right? So I hope that helps. That's gonna wrap up today's video. If you want additional information on what I talked about today, make sure you check out the description box where I'll leave some helpful links uh, if that's something that interests you, along with a list of, of uh, additional videos free guides and articles that I think will be of tremendous value to you. You can also visit my website for more information or to get a hold of me. Until next time, I'm Dr. Hackmeyer. Take care.